they're curiously strong. It's an ordinary box of Altoids. But inside, we have an over-unity device. This is a completely self-contained MOSFET oscillator that produces a negative mean power product and a negative mean current output trace. All you have to do is, let's see here, I've got a spare MOSFET and a couple of LEDs and a resistor and a single LED. So all you have to do is select your load, get it the right polarity, let's see, Anode goes there. Okay, so now you got the load in there. <laughs> and all you have to do is turn it on. And there you go. Over Unity, proven, free energy. Pay no attention to the battery. Only pay attention to the LED. Alright, you'll notice I have some. Uh, monitoring points in there, ground reference, uh, VCVR, that blue 1 ohm resistor right there is the current monitoring resistor. The yellow thing on top of it is just a little added inductance, it's a slug tuned inductor. And then over there, whoops, sorry about the focus, there's where the V battery trace is taken. And that's directly from the battery with just this one series inductor, about 4.4 microhenries. Those dual inductor stacks there are, those are each inductors, one, they're just two different uh, manufacturers. So they're both, ag. Okay, those are both 2.2 microhenry inductors in series to give 4.4 microhenries nominal inductance. There's another one. There's the LED load. There's some more circuitry. There's the mini MOSFET 2N7000. There's some more inductances. That's a capacitor, that brown thing. On-off switch, uh, current monitoring resistor, and the uh, uh, system ground point. Okay? The case is not connected to the ground. All right, so now we've got the oscilloscope warmed up, and we've got some probes, probe wires. So we'll take the, let's see, what is this? This is, this is the A probe. So we'll hook, it, hook that up to the battery, uh, the battery point. ground to the ground reference, which is right there. Hmm. I'm trying to watch what I'm doing in the viewfinder of the camera, uh, and the eye-hand coordination is a little strange. You can believe me. Okay, so here's the other probe. Was it dangling in the dog water? Oh, no, it's dry. Okay, so here we'll hook it up to the current monitoring position there, and it's ground lead also to the common uh, reference there. Now we'll take a look at the traces. Okay, so, um, yeah, oh baby. So this is going to produce a strong negative power product. I've already calculated it. Uh, this is where the baseline is for the current viewing resistor right here, so there's a great deal of negative going spikiness there and then here uh, here is where the zero trace of the battery is so there's a negative spike in the battery trace that's going to get multiplied up with some of this positive up here and uh, so that what that adds up to is across this I get if you if you don't correct for the reactive inductance of the current, or rather inductive reactance of the current viewing resistor, you get a uh, mean power of about negative half a watt. So that's going to be reduced some if you take into account the inductive reactance, but 
uh, only the magnitude of the mean power will change, not the sign. So there's a strong negative result there. Okay, even though the waveform is kind of messy up here. All right. Now, here's an interesting thing. <coughs> excuse me, that I've discovered. Okay. So if I just simply remove the load LED, sorry, <laughs> remove the load LED, and of course that kills the oscillations in the whole circuit. So so now if I, I uh, let me do this again. All right. Okay. So there's the load LED in there. So now I'm just going to take it out and I'm going to turn it around, reverse the leads, and stick it back in there. Ah, come on. All right, here, I'll try to keep it on camera the whole time. So there's, there's the load in there. Okay, there it's turned around and put back in there. All right, so it's not, it's not on, not glowing now, right? Uh, of course, there are no oscillations. Everything is dead. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is take another one of these little 2.2 microhenry inductors. Two point two microhenry inductor right there, and I'm going to take it and and uh, just short that LED with it. I'm just going to put it right in there and let it short out that LED. Okay. Oh, I got the LED in the wrong holes. No wonder it didn't didn't work. Okay, so here. Now we'll short the LED. There, and you see the LED came on. So the LED is now glowing uh, when it's shorted by that 2.2 microhenry inductor. Okay. And now look at the waveform. Okay, so the waveform has smoothed out quite a bit, right? Still going to produce that strong negative, maybe even a stronger negative product. Right, because of the, all that ha action happening. Now, what I'm going to do is, oh, okay, so let's just take out the LED completely and let's put, let's just put the inductor in by itself. Okay, this is that same 2.2 microhenry inductor. We'll just put that in there. Well, if we can get it in the hole. Yeah, like that, okay. So now look at the waveform. It's even even smoother, and I am sure that this one is going to produce an even stronger negative power product with just that inductor in there as the load. Okay, so with the LED the right way around, it lights up, and when you short it out with the inductor, you get a smoothed out waveform, and with the LED the wrong way around, it doesn't light up, but when you short it out with the inductor, it does light up, and you get a smoother waveform. If you take the LED out completely and just put an inductor in there, the inductor doesn't light up, but you get the smoothest waveform <laughs> of all, and I, I, I haven't done the math yet, but I'm pretty sure that this one is going to be the strongest negative power product of all. Because remember where the zero line for the, oh, sorry, uh, the zero line for the current trace is right there. So look at all that area that's below, and then all this stuff here up here just gets multiplied by the flat battery voltage, whereas a lot of this negative area gets multiplied by these high peaks on the battery voltage. This is being displayed at a tenth of a volt per division on the current viewing trace. It's a 1.1 ohm, 1 .1 ohm current viewing resistor. And then this is the battery trace, and it's being displayed at 20 volts per division. And I think its baseline may have drifted. Let's see. Yeah, its baseline is off a little bit. So there's there's the baseline for the battery trace, that radical division right down there. And this is at 20 volts per division. Thank you for watching. 
the pocket over unity demonstrator all in an Altoids box completely self-contained except for the oscilloscope.